Hey everyone and welcome to week three of our The Answers to Your Deepest Longings 40 Days Through the Bible. Joel, we're so excited to have you back. We missed you sitting here with us. So good to be back. Yes, we're excited. He is our Director of Theology and Research. And then this is my co-host, Hannah Schindler. Hi. She is our Senior Project Coordinator for First Five. And Hannah, we're so excited that, I mean, another week that we, we get, get to, do, to this, do this, right? Yes. All right, everyone. Well, Hannah is actually going to present this week's longing. And so without further ado, we're going to give you a little drum roll. Ready, Joel? Yeah. The longing for security. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so we are about to encounter some of the Old Testament books, um, some that you maybe don't know much about, or maybe you do. I'll say I don't know much about Judges um, <laughs> or Joshua or First and Second Samuel, although Hannah's name is mentioned in First Samuel. So it's I'll say one of your favorites. Then. Honestly, I do remember that one. Um, but so one book you'll notice that isn't referenced uh, much in the study is Deuteronomy. And so it's part of the Pentateuch. Pentateuch, yep. Pentateuch. Oh, Pentateuch. Yeah. Mm. Either, there you, either way. That's the first five books of the Bible, which actually I learned that phrase for the first time studying for writing this study guide, which is really cool. And that. so, um, yeah, we're going to learn a little more about Deuteronomy today. That's right. And so, Joel, we actually want you to talk about Deuteronomy and how it plays into this week's longing. Yeah, that's so good. So uh, one of the things that maybe we wouldn't connect so easily is the concept of uh, security and a longing for security and then something called the law or the Torah, right? And that's what in Deuteronomy we actually get a lot of. We get this description of God's expectations for his covenant people. And so the Torah or the law uh, is what is taught all the way throughout Deuteronomy. Uh, and now we want to ask this question, well, what does security, a longing for security, have to do with the law? And here's what I've come to find, that in order for us to truly feel secure, we need to experience stability. And the only way for us to really experience stability is for us to have some guardrails around us, right? And these expectations. And so uh, what we find in Deuteronomy are these guardrails. And so here's how I would love for us to reimagine how we think about the law. Sometimes we might think of the Torah as this negative, like it's the law. It's these, right. it's like, it's like you're putting your thumb down on people and it's like you can't ever uh, meet up to the standard. But when we think about it in the context of Israel and then the landscape of the ancient Near East, right? The law was given to Israel to actually set them apart. That's the definition of what it means to be holy. To set them apart as a distinct type of people. But actually, when we turn to 1 Kings chapter 8, we find this incredible passage where King uh, Solomon mm -hmm. prays at the dedication of the temple. And one of the things that I love in that prayer is there's a section in there that speaks specifically to the foreigners mm -hmm. or to those that are outside of the covenant community of faith. And so what this tells us actually is that the law was a... Um, uh, a system to keep Israel set apart, but not to run away mm -hmm. and to be by themselves. It was actually to help them to serve as a sign and as a symbol to the entire world that actually draws the world, the nations, the ethnos to the Lord God himself. And so um, we have actually been given the law now inside of our hearts through the power of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And we have that same responsibility and people that want to long for security, that are looking for that sense of stability, you'll actually find it when we're safe and secure mm -hmm. in the hands of God. And that happens when we live uh, by the law of God, which is written on our, on our hearts now. That's good. I don't know about y'all, but with everything going on in the world, stability sounds really nice yes. right now, like yes. a breath of fresh air. So yeah. I'm excited to dig into this week's content. But before we get into this week, we do have 60 Second Theology. I thought we were skipping this week. No, you thought oh, wrong. Oh, okay. My yeah. bad. All yeah. right. All right. Y'all are still so, going to stress me out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You're about to get stressed we're out. We're excited again. We're amped. Yeah. yeah, always. And so in case you don't know what this is, this is a segment that we came up with when we were creating these videos. To, that they came up with yes, when they were creating gotcha. the videos. To put our direct, director of theology in the hot seat. And so each week we ask him one question and he has 60 seconds to answer. And so I'm going to put the timer on, the clock, on my phone again. All right. And so this week's question is, what does lament mean? Ooh. Okay, so lament is probably a word that we don't use often today, but let me give some other descriptive words for lament. Lament is grief. Lament is sorrow. 
Um, lament is an experience in response to some type of tragedy that has taken place in our lives. And so in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament and the New Testament, lament was an appropriate response to death and to sorrow or, into, or even to injustice that has taken place in the world. In the Old Testament, lament looked like this. You would see people, the book of Job is a great example of Job sitting on the ground in dust, um, essentially uh, just in deep despair because of the hurt and the, the things that have happened to his life. In the New Testament, you see a type of lament that's taking place when Lazarus dies and Jesus walks on the scene of Lazarus' death. In fact, in the Jewish tradition, they would even have professional mourners to take part in the lament so that the community would be aware that people are actually in sorrow. So it's a very good thing for us. And just like that, there's the, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there's the timer. So you got it right, right at it. It's somehow like you can always wrap it up right at the last second, which is Quite impressive, really. Yeah. So great job, Joel. Great Once job. again, you're crushing it. Yes, and I love, again, as we're looking at this longing for security and knowing that lament is even a part of that, that there, when you talked about Lazarus, knowing Jesus wept yeah. in, that, in that time. And so um, we have this safe security in the Lord, um, and it's okay to have that season of lamenting from yeah. time to time. That's not something that we're going to go without. Yeah, and we shouldn't bypass it, right? I think we want to bypass lament. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yet it's the scriptures tell us to actually walk through it. Mm. Yeah, that's so good. Well, thank you guys for joining us this week. We are so grateful to continue going through this study together. And so here at Proverbs, we love to close out every video with this. Um, when we know the truth and live the truth, it truly does change everything.